So you've written this article for Spiked, uh, and you've really very much focused on this notion of indoctrination of the young. And you seem to be onto something. There are all sorts of uh, woke children's books coming out, such as Anti-Racist Baby by Ibram Kendi, uh, anti uh, Feminist Baby. Um, all these sorts of books are coming out. They're very odd, frankly. Um, why do you think that these, let's call them ideologues, are targeting children, or is that just an obvious question? Well, it's very obvious. I mean... <clears throat> throughout human history, from the Jesuits onward, they basically said, give me a child, and I'll turn that child into whatever I want uh, that child to be. And I think what has happened is that uh, uh, the teaching profession and the uh, cultural establishment have been targeting very young children to the point at which uh, six, seven, eight-year-old children are told by their teachers, well, you might have been born as a boy and then a girl, but it's really up to you to decide what gender you want to be. And I've talked to loads of parents who, who, who kind of send me their experiences, mothers uh, in Krachen who tell me that they were always on the left. They were kind of hardcore remainers, uh, sorry, leavers, rem remainers. And then all of a sudden, they realized that, that you know, they, they, they're, they're, this is the lockdown, the kids being taught on Zoom by their teacher. And they realized that uh, the teacher is telling the children that they should be aware of their white privileges and their white fragility. And these are 11, 12-year-old kids who are made to feel guilty about being white. So this woman, who's always been uh, sort of a, a hardcore left-wing uh, sort of remainder, all of a sudden flips and goes crazy because she realizes that the teachers are turning her kids against her. And I think a lot of parents have had that experience. Uh, and in the United States, a lot of parents have taken matters into their own hands. And in particular, in Virginia, they, they use the issue of the indoctrination of children in the classroom as a way of getting rid of the existing uh, democratic uh, sort of uh, kind of governor there and electing somebody else. And I, I don't particularly like when parents are forced to do that. But if, if the classroom becomes so politicized and if young kids are told, uh, 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 to behave in, in accordance with values that are very different than those of normal parents, then it's not surprising that that's becoming a very fertile terrain for cultural conflict. And I predict that the same thing is going to happen in England and Wales and Scotland, just because there's such a, 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 a difference between how normal parents uh, think and the values that they uphold and, and the kind of teaching material that their kids are being exposed to. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna see the publication, the teaching material that kids are, are, are reading, and you, you almost feel that it's an alien world that's being imposed upon them. Um, and nobody knows about this because people think that the big battles are in universities. You know, uh, cancel culture is over there amongst old people, whereas in fact, it already begins in the nurseries. It kicks in at a very, very early age. And I think for me, this is a, a, a very important battle, and, and one that could be easily won, because most parents who remain quiet when they hear, uh, when they're told that you shouldn't be saying this, this is an inappropriate word, they kind of keep quiet about it, they don't want to get involved. But when their child is affected, when their child is being targeted, they change that, that, their behavior, and they really take on board the need to fight back. And that's what happened in America. Uh, and I think that's what's going to happen here as well. And, and Frank, I mean, as you say, a lot of people aren't aware that this kind of stuff is happening, but it's taking various forms. You've got critical race theory coming into various schools. Brighton Council introduced uh, an anti-racist school strategy that was obviously informed by critical race theory, although tellingly they didn't use the phrase in the documentation. Uh, you've got gender identity ideology coming into schools, all of this stuff. Um, and as you say, maybe we're a bit behind America here because now there's various lawsuits by parents who are concerned about the uh, segregationist uh, implications of critical race theory as applied uh, in, in school practice. So, um, but how do we push back against this when so many of the major institutions um, seem to be pushing it? The National Education Union, for instance, saying that there's an urgent need to decolonize every level of the school curricula and for effectively teachers to be activists. How can you do that when the largest teaching union is saying that? How do we stop it? I think that parents need to become activists. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of good teachers out there who are themselves... Uh, upset about what they're, what they're doing or what they're meant to do. But at the moment, there is not enough parental pressure. Parents hope and imagine that things will be done all right, that the teachers will respect their values. 
Uh, but at, and at the moment, it's mainly parents of religious conviction. You know, for example, Muslim parents or or religious Jewish parents or Roman Catholics or religious who are kind of kicking back. But what we need is a much more uh, kind of concerted effort where people get involved. And, and when the teaching profession tells parents that this is not their business, I think at that point they got to fight back. So just to give you an example, I talked to a couple of women who demanded to, to kind of uh, see what is the course material that the kids are, are kind of uh, learning from, because they heard that the course material is very ideologically extremely uh, dubious. And so the uh, headmaster writes back to them saying, it's none of your business, this is a teaching matter. But of course, uh, parents need to know what their kids are learning. It shouldn't be a secret. It shouldn't be somehow uh, something that's kind of, uh, they, they kind of kept away from. And if, pa if parents begin to kind of take on board these kinds of issues and fight back and demand uh, to be taken seriously, that they have to have a voice, and that it's very important that their values is not rejected or, or disparaged, but, you know, but actually upheld. I think if they begin to do that a little bit more, then the teaching profession and the whole education establishment will get a little bit more defensive and, and yeah. will have to begin to learn to be responsible a little bit more.